good evening today we should be dealing with ecg case number 15 in our ecg series the title is mera mera on the wall so the date is december 25 so a merry christmas and a happy new year to all you guys so this is a 37 year old bodybuilder on steroids presenting with new onset dyspnea and his drop is strongly positive we can have a look at this ecg if required you can press the pause button and and is the options on the right this ecg shows st depression in v1 v2 v3 and v4 a bit of st depression in v5 around a half millimeter this was seen by the resident on call and uh, he thought this was anterior wall subendocardial ischemia he diagnosed it as an end stem anterior wall so uh, since he found there was no st elevations on the ecg but rather st depressions with the elevated troponin he made a diagnosis of end stem and since the depression was in the anterior leads he diagnosed as end stem anterior wall and then started the patient on heparin let's see what's happened subsequently as per the 2018 esc acc aha uh, world health federation guidelines to diagnose a stemi you need new onset of st elevation in two contiguous leads more than 1 mm uh, there's a bit of a difference in v2 and v3 let's leave that for the time being but essentially a new onset st elevation of more than 1 mm so if you look at this ecg you can see there is no st elevation rather st depression hence according to that definition it did not quantify as a stent now uh, the senior consultant comes in and uh, he says why not get a right sided as well as a posterior leads so uh, let's look at the posterior leads you can see uh, that there is no significant st elevation like in v7 v8 and v9 maybe a quarter millimeter st elevation in v7 at the most so uh, the consultant saw this and he diagnosed that there was probably no posterior wall mi since there was no significant st elevation of 1 mm so uh, the patient was continued on heparin given ntg for pain but however despite increasing dose of ntg on nitroglycerin there was no pain relief so this patient was taken up for an angiogram and in the angiogram it was found that this patient had a proximal circumflex total occlusion and uh, this was subsequently wired you can see the wire in the so, obtuse margin which is a branch of the circumflex the lesion was dilated and subsequently it was stented resulting in a fairly good flow you can see that the last result fairly good flow there's still some thrombus here uh, but it's a reasonable result so this actually turned out to be a proximal circumflex total occlusion a stemi rather than a non st elevation mi which required a primary pci so this was post cath ecg now you can see it has evolved into a posterior wall mi you can see the prominent r r waves in v1 v2 the r by s ratio in v1 is uh, almost 1 and in v2 is more than one you can see prominent upright uh, t waves uh, and a bit of a q wave in 3 and a wave all are indications of a prominent evolved posterior wall so again this is pre procedure and post procedure you can see that the st depressions have resolved and it goes in for a prominent t wave with the increasing height of the r wave so as this is the evolved posterior wall mi changes so what went right so normally when we see uh, posterior wall mi is usually associated with an inferior wall mi so if you see an ecg like this is not a problem to diagnose stemi because you obviously have the elevations in 2 3 and if that by satisfying satisfying the definition of a stemi you can see posteriorly it's been taken you can see uh, st elevation of around 3 to 4 mm in v7 v8 and v9 again the diagnosis is not difficult it's a inferior posterior mi some lateral extension also posterior leads show prominent st elevations so in this case uh, they thought that it was posterior wall mi they took the posterior lead so that was good however they found that the posterior lead did not have any uh, st elevation of more than 1 mm so the if you want to diagnose posterior mi it's always useful to flip the ecg so you can see v2 here you flip the ecg the st depression becomes the st elevation the r wave becomes the t wave now this is can be easily diagnosed to be a stemi however this is due to the fact that we don't have representation on the ecg for a posterior wall the anterior wall the lateral wall and the inferior wall are well represented we don't have leads taken usually specifically for the posterior wall on a normal 12 lead ecg so 
we look, look for reciprocal changes in the anti revol often it is often good to take posterior wall as well as right side release in any patient with chest pain however this is seldom done so what went wrong the fact that you should be you should be remember that in posterior leads at least 0.5 mm st elevation indicates a posterior stem so this must be kept in mind it is not 1 mm but a 0.5 mm st elevation is sufficient to diagnose posterior wall amnesia if you look at the ccg uh, there is no significant even 0.5 mm st elevation is difficult to say at the most a 0.25 mm st elevation so again why do we keep this 0.5 mm cut off this is because unlike the anterior wall which is close to the chest ecg the electricity has to travel across the air filled lungs now air is a poor conductor of electricity and then it has to travel through the large muscles of the back so the voltage potentials are obviously going to be lower again this patient is a bodybuilder so a person with huge muscles in the back as in this case when compared to another frail individual with uh, less back musculature obviously you expect lower st uh, lower potentials on the ecg in the bodybuilder so although the your guidelines give it as 0.5 mm this should also be taken with context so people with huge back musculature you probably have a lower cut off for st elevation so that's why this was missed since he was a bodybuilder the large muscles of the back actually caused a lower potential so this must also be taken into concern so isolated posterior wall stemi the european society of cardiology 2017 in order to diagnose a posterior wall mi you need a st depression more than 0.5 mm in lead v1 to v3 or st elevation of 0.5 mm in lead v7 to v9 which is a posterior lead so remember the cut off is 0.5 mm in the posterior lead and not 1 mm as usually seen and also remember if you have large emphysematous lungs or if you have huge back musculature you will probably require a lower cut off so context is very important in these cases posterior wall mi is common seen on 15 to 21 patients of acute mi however isolated posterior wall mi is rare it's only seen around in 3 to 4 percent the culprit artery often turns out to be the circumflex uh, or the ramus usually the circumflex so in order to hammer these points let's look at a few cases this is a 54 year old male with poorly localizable chest discomfort this present around 3 uh, to 4 days ago so you can see uh, st a depression of around 0.5 mm in v2 v3 v4 and you can see carefully if you look you can see a high take off of the st segment in pre and avf and uh, maybe a quarter millimeter st elevation in v6 however this warrants concern because uh, isolated st depressions uh, all signify a posterior wall mi so if you see isolated st depressions in v1 v2 v3 v4 do not go and think this is anterior wall ischemia remember that st depression does not localize so localized st depressions you start thinking of opposite or reciprocal territory st elevations so if you see st depressions in v1 v2 v3 v4 you think of is it am i dealing with a posterior wall stemi if you see st depressions in 2 3 av you don't think of inferior wall ischemia you think am i dealing with a lateral wall stem so when you see localized st depressions think of opposite territory st elevations so the ecg was repeated on half an hour later now you can see the st depressions have become more prominent you have an st elevation in v6 of around 1 mm a high take off in 3 and ab this is actually a inferior wall posterior wall and lateral wall in my prominent posterior wall changes so it's easy if you flip the ecg you can automatically see the r and the st elevation so i mean q uh, q and the st elevation so it's very easy to already to find this so just flip the ecg so this was an infero postro lateral wall mi with prominent posterior changes again when you have prominent posterior changes you think am i dealing with a circumflex or a culprit so you, this is another ecg uh, you can just forget about the rhythm you can see that we have isolated st depressions in v1 v2 v3 and v4 Now this, when you think of isolated ST depressions in the anterior leads, think posterior wall MI. Again, another case you can see there is a uh, around a half millimeter ST depression in V2, V3, and V4. Prominent R waves in V2. This was actually a posterior wall MI. It's an isolated posterior wall MI. Again, ST depressions, down sloping ST depressions V1 to V V4. Uh, there is no ST elevations in the other leads, so this is an isolated posterior wall MI. 
So take home messages. T inversions and ST depressions indicate ischemia. ST elevation indicates injury, current of injury, and pathological Q waves indicate an infarct. Remember that ischemia does not localize on the EC. So this is a very important point. So if you see T inversions and ST depressions, do not go and say this is anti revolved ischemia or inti revolved ischemia. It cannot localize. So it's a good idea to eliminate terms like inferior ischemia or anterior ischemia from your vocabulary based on your EC. However, injury and infarct localize. So you can see ST elevation in the anterior release, you can come up on an anterior volume. If you see pathological Q waves in 2, 3, AF, you can probably say it's an old inferior volume. So injury and infarct localizes, ischemia does not. So a very important point. And whenever you see localized ST depressions, think of opposite territory ST elevations. Isolated ST depressions in V1 to V4 think posterior volume. It's a STEMI equivalent. 0.5 millimeter ST elevation is enough in the posterior lead, sometimes even lesser. Remember, context is important. So if you're dealing with emphysematous patients or if you're dealing with uh, heavy manual laborers who have a huge back musculature, even less than that is probably enough. Treating STEMI as NSTEMI results in a higher mortality rate. STEMI implies a 100% occluded artery. You need to open that artery up. So it either requires a fibrinolysis or a primary PCA. So missing that and treating it as an NSTEMI giving heparin results in a higher mortality rate. So if you like these videos, please like, share, and subscribe, and press the bell icon to get notified when a new video uploads. And please comment so that you can direct what direction this channel takes in next. So thank you.